got up to? Uh, I, I did beat it, uh, but not by not by that far. Um, it's just such a it's it's such a the Sunday night at the Ryder Cup, is such a cool and special night, and um, I think for, for for me when you get to celebrate it with your teammates, but also your family and the ones that have been there to support you. Um, it's it's just a very special night. The Ryder Cup's there in the middle of the party, and and you know that that you know it's something that you've that you've all achieved together. You you know you have your pictures with it. You celebrate, um, and yeah, from the moment we finished, um, it's just such a high. And uh, I, I mean, I like that you assumed that I would beat one thirty and beat uh, and beat Fitzy, but it, it wasn't it was it wasn't that far off. Uh, yeah, not not really. Um, <laughs> I think it's it still feels um, still feels a bit surreal, really, and I think everybody, like the team, has still been messaging a lot, and everybody uh, everybody's still very much enjoying um, watching the highlights back. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a strange feeling when you know you kind of think about it, and it yeah, it's it's, it's kind of done now. I can't believe the week's over, um, but just so so happy that it finished the way it did, and we. Um, and we achieved what we uh, what we went there to do all together. Well, it's it's definitely the highlight right now. Um, I was relieved. I'm still relieved right now that we managed to do it. I think um, me uh, myself, Shane, and Bob. I remember we were having some physio in the morning at the golf club, and we were warming up. And all three of us said, you know, we were joking, but we said we want no part of having to play a, a role in today's singles. Um, and then it it sort of became apparent that it might. Yeah, it might come down to to one of us, and there was a lot of there was there was just a lot of red in the middle of the in the middle of the board, but the games were still relatively close, and it, it and it's a strange strange one, and I think um, I'd as, I'd asked Francesco in the morning about some advice because I remembered that at Medina he went out number twelve very famously, and I said, you know, it's kind of it's unexpected that it might come down to us, but I sort of want to be ready for it. And he gave me some great advice and I was trying to really focus on my game. I was um, very determined. I'd never won a singles before in a Ryder Cup and I was very determined to do that from an individual basis. But then um, I kind of still expect, you know, somebody I thought would get a, like the heart. We needed a half point for like an hour and a half. It was quite a long time that we needed a half point and um, just very nerve wracking. But I did stand on that 16th tee and I was looking down um, like I was looking down the hole and at the green and um, no matter how nervous you are, what an amazing opportunity to do something memorable in, in your career. So uh, I was just happy to like see my drive set off where it did and go straight. <laughs> yeah, I've said it a few times, Francesco has um, it's very much been a, a huge part of my Ryder Cup life, if you like. He was my partner in my rookie Ryder Cup and um, this, this week again, um, he was my vice captain, mine and, mine and Rory's vice captain when I was playing um, in the foursomes and then my vice captain again in the afternoon when I played with Nikolai. And, um, so he's very much been by my side throughout my um, Ryder Cup uh, lifetime, if you like. So um, he, he did an amazing job as a vice. He was, he was an amazing player um, and he might still play again. I'm pretty confident that he can do that. And, um, but as a vice captain, just his... He has an amazing attitude to him, an amazing you know way of putting things across, and I, I just thought it was great having him around. I think all the the vice captains and the captain they they were just an amazing mix of people, and they did such a great job. And again, um, from a personal standpoint, having somebody as close as Francesco that's around means a lot to me, and it helps me a lot. Yeah, I mean, any Ryder Cup you have. Um, you have a bond for life with every single person that you shared that um, team room with, um, and, it, and it is very, very special. And you, you definitely understand that after after you've played one, um, what it means, and you've stood alongside each other, and you remember that forever. Um, this was, I think, there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of press, and there was a lot made of this being kind of a, a new team and a, and a potentially a new era of um, the European Ryder Cup team. I think. I think everybody that was there really enjoyed it. I thought the um, the connection that everybody made, the atmosphere that was in that team room, and just the general, you know, it wasn't, 
you know, nobody had to particularly state anything or make anything about it, but it, it you know, there was clearly some new roles that were put on people um, having to step up, and I think the rookies were... The rookies were phenomenal from how they, the role that they played in the team room to being out on the golf course, the way that they played, the way that they acted. Um, I thought they did an absolutely amazing job. And um, I think when you look at, things change a lot. We see it all the time. Things change a lot in two years. Two years is, it goes by quick, but it's a very long time and things happen. Um, but you look at the makeup of what this team was and, and how everybody was, I think if you through the same 12 players in in two years time everybody would be very happy with it um, that was there of course we would you want to you want to play every rider cup you can but I just think the future of like European golf looks very bright when you look at how uh, this team performed <laughs> I was uh, well there was t there was two options to be honest um, so I, I was thinking there was a minute you know I, I spoke about to Fino about the mini driver um, which I knew would draw, so I knew I was never going to hit it right with a mini driver, but it was going to go short left. Um, in my mind, Ricky was still going to make par, um, and it was just an opportunity to step up, and one good shot was about to win the Ryder Cup, uh, which still gives me goosebumps now when I, when I think about it. And I, uh, you know, I, for me, I just teed the driver down a little bit, and I just put a swing on it, and uh, that, was, that was all that I was thinking. Um, you know, at the time, just what, what an amazing opportunity it was. I was, um, you practice your whole life, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, me, um, you know, Tommy Fleard from Southport was stood there with the opportunity to hit one good shot and win the Ryder Cup. And um, still can't believe it went straight, to be honest. But uh, I was very happy, like I say, when I looked up uh, and saw where the ball was heading, um, I was very, very pleased, and then you can't, you can't really see where the ball lands. The sun kind of shines at you, and all you, all you have to do is wait for what the noise is going to be in the crowd, and it was on the green, and I was like, yeah, that, that, that'll do. <laughs> Absolutely, a, a, a dream of mine would be to captain a Ryder Cup team. Um, you know, with this uh, you know, current bid that we've just, that we've just mentioned, um, at Halton Park, there's, there's, I mean, there's, there's two dreams. It's, it's, it's a long way away um, to play in a Ryder Cup in the Northwest. I mean, amazing to captain a Ryder Cup in the Northwest would be amazing. Um, so just any role that I can play in that, I think, um, like I say, you know, looking, looking down the line and feeling like, um, you know, just being a part of that, that bid, supporting, supporting the area, being, being a boy from the Northwest of England and, and everything that we believe that it can bring um, it's very, very special to me. Um, and then on top of that, the opportunity to play a role as a, as a player or a captain or a vice captain or any way of me being at that Ryder Cup would be um, just the icing on the cake and unbelievably special. So, um, you know, what, looking at the captains that I've played under um, and the figures that they are and um, the inspiration that they've brought to us all as players, um, yeah, if I could, you know, live up to half as much as they've managed to accomplish as in their careers, but also as captains. Um, you know, I'd be very proud of myself to think that I can, that I can do that. Oh, uh, like 1.30, so nothing, nothing crazy, nothing crazy. Looking back on that week, how would you sort of des describe the whole sort of three days, what went on in, in the bus, that after the winning, the press conferences and everything, just how would you describe the week? Yeah, it was uh, an amazing week. Uh, it really was. It, um, you know, you, you go into the event beforehand, um, even with it being at home, we obviously kind of were given a little bit more of a chance. Um, but, you know, you look nine months out, six months out, three months out, it, it was, oh, USA, they've got so much depth. Um, it's going to be really difficult for Europe to win. And... Um, I think that kind of shows how good the result is, um, given all what happened before it. Really, with with everything, um, you know, the, the players that they have and uh, the depth that they have, um, for us to to go out there and and play as as well as we did and and you know win the Ryder Cup back was uh, just showed sort of how how well we played. No, not at all, not at all. Um, you know, you look at the Molinaris; they've done it. Um, you look at the Hogards, they've got a great chance of doing it as well. Uh, me and Alex hopefully have a great chance of doing it. Um, 
to be able to do that with him would be, you know, incredibly special. And um, we we obviously got some good practice in the Zurich event this year. Um, so hopefully that might be, you know, a sign of things to come.